Hitchcock's Tales of the Bizarre takes us to Mars, where, it turns out, you can actually get a telephone signal, which means my mobile phone provider really has some catching up to do. It's a magnificent performance, too, from a radio great, Kerry Shale, that really livens up what you'll hear coming down the line to you now in Night Call Collect. This is Ray Bradbury. I'd like to do a little explaining about how I work and how I write my stories and how, in particular, I wrote the next uh, drama that you'll be hearing, Night Call Collect. There are two parts to my psyche, you might say, the part that writes and the part that uh, looks over the shoulder of the writer. Uh, My subconscious does the writing, and I take the credit for it. So over the years, I've experimented with word association, and many of the stories you will hear in this series and see in my books were done by word association. In other words, I went to my typewriter, I put down a few words and looked at them and said, why have I put down this metaphor? What does this mean to me? And then I proceed to bring in characters who explain to one another what's going on. Next thing you know, we got a fight going, and two hours later, you have a short story. So in the case of, uh, of Night Call Collect, I was intrigued with the, the thought of the telephone, not only in the United States, in our hometowns, but on Mars. What if you had a person, I said to myself, alone on Mars, and he begins to get a series of very peculiar calls. And he doesn't realize at first that it's himself calling himself. Huh? And once I got that idea, I thought, well, good, let's, let's play this off and see how it ends. So I went to my typewriter, I began to type like crazy, and by gosh, uh, two or three hours later, I had the story. And it's been reprinted a number of times, and I had one heck of a wonderful time writing it. So I hope you will enjoy listening to Night Call Collect. Suppose and then, suppose and then, suppose. Fifty years, fifty years, you're sitting in this empty room, empty house, town, planet. (laughs) Mars. Empty. No, 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 no. What do I do? Yeah, yeah, answer it. Yes, yes, answer it. No, 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 no. Uh, who? Uh, how? Yeah. No, no. No one to ring. No one here. No one alive. Only me. Yeah, yeah. Alive. Alone. Yeah, yeah. Empty town. Empty planet. Yeah. Answer it. No, no, wrong. Yeah. Go on! No! Now! No! Stop it! Stop it! Stop! Stop the ringing! Barton. Who? Barton. Barton? Barton. Jay, that's me. Barton. Jay, Barton. Jay, I haven't Barton. heard Barton. anyone say Barton. my name for, for years. For 50 Barton. years. Barton. 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 Shut up. Barton. Do you hear? Barton, Shut up! Barton, Shut Barton, up! Barton, no! No! Barton! Barton here! Well? Well? Do you know who this is? The first call I've had in half a lifetime and we play games?! Who? Sorry, Who? stupid of me. Of course you wouldn't recognize your own voice on the telephone. Oh. No one ever does. 
we are accustomed, all of us, to hearing our voice conducted through the bones of our head. Barton, this is Barton. What? Who did you think it was? A rocket captain? Did you think someone had come to rescue you? No. You have heard this voice before, many times, though not for many years now, I admit. You've probably forgotten. What's the date? July 20th, 2097. But... Good Lord, 50 years. Have you been sitting there that long, waiting for a rocket to come from Earth? Well, have you? No. Now, old man, do you know who I am? Yes. Yes. Well, go on. We... Yes. We are one. I am Emil Barton. You are Emil Barton. With one difference. Yes. Yes. You're 80. I'm only 20. All of life before me. <laughs> <laughs> you there, listen. Oh God, if I could warn you, but how can I? You're only a voice. If I could only show you, show you how, how lonely the years are. End it. Kill yourself. Don't wait. If you knew what it is to change from the thing you are to the thing that is me today, here, now, at this end. Impossible. I've no way to tell if you ever get this call. This is all mechanical. You're talking to a transcription, no more. This is 2037, 60 years in your past. I remember that night, way out of town, up in the hills, miles from anywhere, working, laying new telephone cables to the other side of Mars. Late at night, listening to the radio, the crackling voice, threading its way along unraveling airwaves. Worsening international crisis. The president stressed the extreme seriousness of the situation. If his 11th hour attempt at diplomacy fails, world war imminent and unavoidable. Come home, men of Mars. Come home. When I got there, the rocket field was empty. They left me behind. I looked up into the velvet blackness and saw somewhere up there, among all those stars, the blue-green star that was Earth seemed to catch fire, burn. I remember. How could I forget? Arriving in the little white silent town on the edge of the dead Martian sea. The town was dead. No sound. Only the power hum of electric lines, dynamos still alive. Beds were cold and empty. Lonely lights burned in the stores all day. Shop doors stood wide, as if, as if people had run off without using their keys. Which they had. Money. <laughs> Money! <laughs> Might as well take this with me. No one here to use it. But... What for? It's no use to me. I remember feeling somehow shameful, silly. I put the money back, left the store, dropping a coin in the jukebox, selecting a tune to, to break the silence. A dime in every jukebox in town, every tape recorder going. <laughs> <laughs>
every record player playing. Sounds for an empty world. A whole week has passed. Sleeping in a good house on Mars Avenue. Not the sort of place I could afford, but now, well, <laughs> who cares? <laughs> I can do what I like now. Yeah, I get up at nine, bathe, idle into town for ham and eggs, go to the shops, frozen food, yeah, meat, vegetables, lemon green pies, enough to last for years, enough to last until the rockets come back from Earth. How long can it be? Before the rockets come back, a month, a year, who cares, huh? Who cares? Meanwhile, I've food, wine, beer, clothes, books, everything, everything. No one else here, so it's all mine. <laughs> it might as well be as good as, you might say, anything, everything, mine. How many people are there in this galaxy, I should like to know, who have everything, everything, except in my spare time, uh, spare time. There was only spare time. I used my skills, made transcription libraries of 10,000 words, tapes sensitive to all questions, electronic responses, my voice connected to phone relays. Later, I'll... I'll call. Yeah, I'll have someone to, to talk with. Someone to... Call me. Call me. Call me. And I did. I called. Uh, rather, you called. Yes, I called. Do you remember? I remember. What insanity. How silly. How... How inspired. Uh, those first secluded years. Fixing the telephonic brains, the tapes, the circuits. Scheduling calls on time delays. Hello. Morning, Barton. This is Barton. Yes! Uh, what's the time, Barton? The time, Barton, is seven o'clock. Time to rise and shine. Utter insanity. Yes? Barton. Barton calling. <laughs> You're to go to Mars Town at noon. <laughs> Install a telephonic brain. Thought I'd remind you. Thanks. How absurd. Hi. Barton? Barton, have lunch with me. The Rocket Inn. Right. See you. So long. Madness. Barton, look. That you be? Thought I'd cheer you up. Firm chin, stiff upper lip and all that. The rescue rocket might come tomorrow. That's right. Tomorrow. 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 Click. What did you say, old man? Uh, nothing, just remembering. The ringing of the phone, the click of the disconnecting line. Remembering those nights six decades ago, rushing over blue hills into iron valleys with a truck full of machinery, whistling happily. <laughs> another telephone, another relay, making calls three years on. Yes, Barton. Hi, Barton. How's the memory? P pretty good. Yes? Well, I thought we'd test it. Give the old gray matter a chance to stretch its muscles. When you hear this, it will be three years since I recorded it. Got a quote for you. See if you can finish it off. Quote? What quote? I I've forgotten How that. can you possibly have forgotten? You are the me that recorded this message three years ago. Well, uh... Think, Barton. Think. I've chosen something very appropriate for a telephone conversation. You used to know this by heart, recited it in a school show once. But do you know it now? That's the question. Ready? Ready. Suppose and then suppose and then suppose... Oh, uh, that, uh, that, that wires on the far-slung telephone black poles sopped up the billion flooded words they heard each night all night and saved the sense and meaning of it all. Um, um, oh, what next? Then? Uh, yes, then a jigsaw in the night put all together and in philosophic phase tried words. Uh, uh, oh, how does it end? Um, Shall I tell you? 
Uh, no, no, wait. Uh, thus, mindless beast, all treasuring of vowels and consonants, saves up a miracle of bad advice and lets it filter, whisper, heartbeat out, one lisping murmur at a time. So one night soon, someone sits up, hears sharp bell ring, lifts phone. That's us, Barton, isn't it? Uh, lifts phone and hears a voice like Holy Ghost, uh, gone far in nebulae, that uh, beast upon the wire, which with sibilance and savoring down continental madnesses of time, says, Hell, and, oh, and then, Hell, oh. Hell, oh, Barton. There was always another telephone, another relay, something to do, something clever and wonderful and sad. Something to, to make a phone ring four, five, six years on. Telephones, recording machines, tapes triggered by pulses, interactive messages and trivial jests linked up and transmitted by subtle machineries. Time to make a call nine years on. Hidden voices. <laughs> hidden. Hidden. What was I doing in those young days, when death was not death, time was not time? Old age, a faint echo from the long cavern of years ahead. My twenty-first birthday, sitting alone in an empty movie theater, playing an old Laurel and Hardy. God, how I laughed, laughed and laughed and laughed. I got an idea. Recorded my voice 1,000 times on one tape. It sounded like a thousand people. And I fixed it so doors would slam in town. The children sing. Music boxes play. That was my first sign. What? The first time I admitted, I was lonely. The first indication of just how ingenious I could be. Next were my experiments with smells. As I walked the empty streets, the smell of bacon, eggs, ham, and fillets coming from the houses. And all of it done by hidden machines. Madness. Self-protection. I'm tired. Bart? Got to get out of here. No more phones. Got to breathe air. Walk the streets like I used to when I was 20, 40, 60. No mechanical life out on the streets now. No neon lights, no music, no sound of footsteps, <laughs> no lingering cooking smells, no aroma of strawberry pie. All done away with, all stopped dead in their mechanical tracks. Only the phones. Suddenly ringing again after all these years. Fifty years. Ignore them. It must be me. So long ago, I don't even remember dialing, storing the numbers. And yet... What if it isn't me? What if it's... All right! Yeah, I'm coming! I'm coming! Yes. You might try and sound pleased to hear from me, Barton. What do you want? I'm lonely. I only live when I speak. So I must speak. You can't shut me up forever. What are you talking about? Do you think I don't remember? Or should I say, do you think I don't know what will happen? Riddles. Not at all. Do you think I don't know what will eventually happen? How one day you, I, will shut down the phones, switch off the machineries, mute the bells, disconnect the speakers, put an end to my clever, clever repartee. Isn't that what will happen? What did happen? Yes. I finally switched everything off, 
Except... Except? Except that I decided the machines were only to call me a, after I was 80. Fifty-something years from now, my own tapes ringing me up. I doubt if I'll be here on Mars that long. It's just a beautiful, ironic idea of mine. Something to pass the time. Uh, no. Today, I'm 80. Uh, and the phone starts ringing. Oh, oh the past. Breathing in my ear. Whispering. Remembering. Hello. Is that really you, Barton? Is that really me? Yeah. I must have made a thousand Bartons in one thousand Martian towns. An army of Bartons all over Mars while I wait for the rockets to return. Fool! You waited sixty years! You grew old waiting! Always alone! And now you've become me! And you're still alone in the empty cities! Don't expect my sympathy. You're like a stranger. <laughs> Off in another country. I can't be sad. I'm alive when I make these tapes. And I'm alive when I hear them. That's right. Both of us, to the other, incomprehensible. Neither can warn the other, even though both respond, one to the other. One automatically, the other warmly and humanly. Human? Why, yes. I'm human now. Yes, of course. And I'm human later. It's insane. I can't cry, because not knowing the future, I can only be optimistic. These hidden tapes can only react to a certain number of stimuli from you. Can you ask a dead man to weep? Stop it! Can't hear you, Barton. Oh, God! But you are heartless. And now it's you who've got trouble with your heart. Go away! Go away! Where, old man? I am. As long as tapes glide on, as long as spindles turn, and hidden electronic eyes read and select and convert words to send you, I'll be young and cruel. In fact, I'll go on being young and cruel long after you're dead. Goodbye. Uh, oh, wait! <laughs> you leave me alone! Did you hear? Stop calling me! Or I'll kill you! <laughs> well? You can't kill me. You'll have to find me first. I'll find you. You've forgotten <laughs> where you hid me. I'm everywhere. In boxes, houses, cables, towers, slung from pylons overhead, carried in conduits underground. Go ahead, try. No. No. What'll you call it? <laughs> Suicide? Telecide? Stop it! What is it? Jealous, are you? Jealous of me here? Only 24, bright-eyed, strong, young. All right, old man. It's war. Between us? Between me. A whole regiment of us, all ages, 20 to 30, against you, the real one. Well, go ahead. Declare war. I'll kill you! I'll find them! Destroy all of them! God, how can he do this to me? Yeah, I'm going to destroy you, all of you. I've got a gun. I've all the guns on Mars and ammunition, plenty of it. I'll, I'll find every junction box and blow the cables and wires to smithereens. Ah! What's the matter? Don't you believe me? You think I won't shoot my own circuits? Well, you're wrong. That one over there. If there are any electronic pulses in there sending out signals, ringing telephones, this will shut them up. <laughs> The public phones? D did I rig those as well? I I can't have done. No, no one rings a phone in the street, and unless. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Hello. Who's that? Oh. Is somebody there? Please don't bother me. Who's this? Who's there? Who is it? Where are you? Wait a minute. This is Emil Barton. Who's that? This is Captain Rockwell. Just arrived on the Pegasus 48 from Earth. No. Are you there, Mr. Barton? You did say your name was Barton. No, it can't be. Where are you? You're lying. It's, it's you, Barton, isn't it? Yeah. I'm sorry, I thought you said your name was Barton. Uh, it is. But, but how do I know you're not lying to me, making fun of me? Look, Mr. Barton, this is Captain Rockwell. Just landed in New Chicago. Where are you? In Green Villa. Uh, that's 600 miles from you. Can you come here? What? what? We've got repairs on our rocket. Can you come help? Uh, yes. Yes. We're at the field outside town. Can you get here by tomorrow? Uh, yes. But, um... Well? Are you sure you're Captain Rockwell? Damn it, man! I'm sorry. I'm on my way. Empty. The rocket field empty. No rocket. No one. D -d -d Don't understand what's happening. Where are they? <laughs> Phone. <laughs> the shed. The office. It looks deserted. It must be. No. No one. Who? No! 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 Yes. I was wondering if you'd get there alive. <laughs> Captain Rockwell reporting for duty. Your orders, sir? You! To be precise, Barton. You! No, I couldn't have done that! Made a recording like that all those years ago! Guess you must have done. I certainly did. Just put it down to a fit of drunken cynicism. No harm meant, no harm done. <laughs> How's your heart, old man? <laughs> what are you doing to me, Martin? Had to eliminate you some way so I could live. If you call a transcription living. Uh, I'm going out now. I, I don't care. I'll blow up everything until you're all dead. You haven't the strength. Why do you think I had you travel so far, so fast? This is your last trip. <laughs> Night Call Collect is the name of the piece, and all the Bartons, all the young ones, and the old one were played by Carrie Shale. My story was dramatized by Brian Sibley, and the resulting play was directed in Edinburgh by Hamish Wilson. The next story in this series of Tales of the Bazaar is called Have I Got a Chocolate Bar for You, a story in which the two principal characters never get to see each other. 
This is Ray Bradbury wishing you a good evening and hoping that you will join me next week for another Tale of the Bazaar. Ah, Hamish Wilson, a lovely man. We lost him during the pandemic, 